Hi, everybody. My name is Chrissy. Hi, and this is Jackie, and we're from the Chattanooga Public Library. And today we are going to be doing a so what activity in which we upcycle t-shirts into either cat toys or dog toys. So we at the library, we really miss our weekly story time visits with the McCamey Animal Center. Once a week, they would bring an animal that needed to be adopted, usually a dog, and do a story time with the kids. It was called Fetch a Book. So we're thinking about those guys, and if you guys are interested in learning more about McCamey or are interested in how you can help them during this time, please visit their website or any of their social media channels. So we're going to go over the supplies and then give the instructions, and by the end of this video, you will have an amazing cat or dog toy. Sounds right. great. Here we go. Okay, so the supplies you're going to need for today, for both toys, you're going to need t-shirts and scissors. For the cat toy, you're going to need cardboard and a marker. And for the dog toy, you're going to need multiple t-shirts. I personally think that the more colorful, the better. But for both of these, it's going to start by making our t-shirts into t-shirt yarn. So we're going to do that first, and then Jackie and I are going to both do the cat toys, because we both have cats, and then I'll do the dog toy. Okay? All right, perfect. So let's start by going ahead and taking our t-shirt and turning it into one long continuous strand of t-shirt yarn. So for that, all you're gonna need is one large t-shirt or t-shirt of any size and your scissors. So you're gonna take your t-shirt and put it out onto your mat. I think I just heard your cat. You did just hear my cat. <laughs> She knows. She knows. Okay, I like your Takis t-shirt. Did you screen print that on the fourth I, floor? I did, I did. Yes. I um, have many a screen printed shirt that say Takis on it because I love it so much, but I uh, decided to use this one today because it's got some stains. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to cut from armpit to armpit so that we can go ahead and just have a nice rectangle to work with. Okay. I also have heard that uh, using t-shirts that smell like you make your pets want to play with the toy even more. That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if that's scary or... or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can get ferocious with her toys too. <laughs> Mine can as well. Okay. So after you do um, armpit to armpit, you're just going to go ahead and take the bottom seam off as well. Okay. It's easy enough. Do you have special scissors you use just for fabric? I, I actually do keep my fabric and paper scissors separate. So, you know, if you mix the two up, it ends up dulling the scissors mm -hmm. and making fabrics harder to cut. So uh, on my scissors at home, if they are used for any of my sewing projects, they, they all say fabric on them. So, that is a know. life goal for me <laughs> to have fabric scissors that I actually honor them as being just fabric scissors. It is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> life goals, they are real. <laughs> okay, so the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our t-shirt and fold it up so that there's about like an inch and a half from the top left. You see how I have it folded over? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. And I've got some wrinkles in this shirt, so I'm going to try to fluff it out a bit. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do now mm -hmm. is we're gonna take our scissors and cut strips. I'm gonna do about an inch, but it just kind of depends on how thick you want your yarn. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do an inch. You don't wanna do less than an inch because it would end up probably tearing and we don't want that. Okay. So you're just gonna go down the line and mm -hmm. cut inch strips. You're gonna go past the fold over, but just mm -hmm. a little bit. You, you wanna leave about an inch up top okay. and you don't cut. So you, you do cut through that top part. Yes, you do. Okay. And if you wanted to, you can mark your lines out with a pencil or a piece of chalk or a marker, right? Yep. 
definitely. Um, I have a marker out uh, in, you know, just in case I wanted to, but sure. luckily I have a cutting mat that will help yeah. me with lines. Yeah, that's nice. My great grandmother always used to sharpen her quilting fabric scissors by cutting aluminum foil. Really? Does that I work? Don't, I don't know. That's just, <laughs> <laughs> that is what my grandmother and mother have told me for many years <laughs> that that's wow. how she sharpened her quilting scissors. We should call the reference phone line after this and ask them. We should. <laughs> <laughs> Our reference line is still open, folks. <laughs> 643-7700. Call them with any questions you may have. <laughs> Nine to six, Monday through Friday. Now t-shirt yarn usually works better on t-shirts with outside seams. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if your t-shirt has side seams or not. It will still work uh mm -hmm. it just will kind of have uh you know that scene with it yeah area. for sure yeah this one doesn't surprisingly so that works in my favor <laughs> your yarn looks great by the way my my yarn yeah looks really good <laughs> like maybe like a hula skirt uh -huh. <laughs> some fringe yes surprise we're changing changing it up in the middle Oh, the tutorial. Let's see. Okay, I have one more cut to make. Okay, no worries. Okay. Um, so the next step, and this is going to be kind of hard to see but to make it a continuous string you're going to mm -hmm. want to zigzag so our first one we're going to take uh and we're literally just going to cut it on a diagonal um okay. without connecting anything so go ahead and do that one the first one you just cut on a diagonal out like l towards the edge so it's sort of just a loose yes so it's strip. It, yeah perfect cool okay so when I did mine, you can see that that's the start. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start here and cut there, and that will okay. continue the loop. Gotcha. Yeah, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's sort of like a connecting the dots sort right. of thing. So you literally just go through, and it's always good for me, like once I make a cut, just, just make sure I'm making the right one. I will mm -hmm. literally pull out the strand just mm -hmm. to make sure that it is still connected to the longer piece. So just zigzag connecting the dots. Okay. Neat. Always cutting on a diagonal. I also say for like t-shirt yarn that using like printed fabrics is not the best, but I will say that I have washed this shirt so many times, mm -hmm. um, mainly testing out to see if our screen printing ink would wash out mm -hmm. and it has become super soft. So mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about um, that affecting the yarn, but at home, if you are using shirts with prints on them, just be aware of that. Okay, so I have like one really long piece of t-shirt yarn now. That's exactly what we want. So, so obviously I do too. Uh, and okay. so our next step is, also this would be really great if you wanted to dress up as a mummy for Halloween, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Halloween will be here for you know it. Yes. So the next step is, 
is just to take our yarn and like we did mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. is to start stretching it. But the good okay. news is, is that this one's gonna go a lot quicker because it is one strand. All right. It's kind of a little assembly line here. Mm -hmm. You can also, I don't know how you're feeling about it, but if you uh, make a lot of these mm -hmm. to do what we were talking about earlier about like macrame or mm -hmm. crocheting, you can also start it into a ball of yarn. <laughs> oh, cool. Just start wrapping it up, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. what I'm doing right now is just kind of wrapping it in on, on itself. This you don't be have a good thing when you're just sort of at your house like sitting on the porch or watching a movie at night absolutely keeping your hands busy mm -hmm. it's satisfying to make stuff so <clears throat> this is going to be our first step on both projects so mm -hmm. while i wrap mine into a ball mm -hmm. and jackie finishes hers up. Um, we will come back in just a couple of minutes and start doing the actual project. Yay, great. Yay. All right, so now that we have our yarn done, um, we're going to start on our cat toy. So I have an example here what the cat toy pom-pom is going to be uh, looking like at the end. My cats have already started to play with it, so it's a little worn out, but yours will look <laughs> uh, fresh Cute. and new before your cat starts playing. So, our first step is going to be creating our pom-pom maker. So what I'm gonna do is just use an old um, soda box to, for mine, but you can use whatever kind of cardboard you have in your house. So at the end of it, it's gonna end up looking like this shape. So you can just go ahead and draw that out. Um, depending on how big you want your pom-pom, that's how why you're gonna make it, uh, but just make sure that you have this space in the middle to tie the string around your pom-pom. So this is the exact one that I used to make this guy, which is about a medium size. I just didn't want to make a giant one and scare my cats. So that looks great. <laughs> All right, so um, I can go ahead and just show you how I made mine. I did not even follow a guide whatsoever. So your next step is going to be taking your pom-pom maker and your yarn. And we're gonna start by wrapping our yarn around our pom-pom maker. You're gonna do it a bunch of times uh, so that it looks pretty thick. So if we wanna go ahead and start doing that. And you can also, if you want to, start by tying a knot around it if you want. That way it stays in place. Just like so. It doesn't have to be super tight knot. Okay. Whenever you think you have the right thickness, mm -hmm you can go ahead and just snip your t-shirt yarn. You don't have to tie it on itself. So you can make several cat toys out of one shirt. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Okay. So the next step after that is going to be taking some of your yarn and mm -hmm. just snipping a piece of it. I'm gonna make mine a little long just to make sure. You want it to be long enough to wrap around your entire uh, thing that you have already going here. Okay. So just make, I, I think that it's better to make it longer than too short. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, All so right. once you have that part snipped, 
you're going to take your yarn and put it through the top hole of your yarn maker and then just loop it around so that it's joining all the pieces together like so. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to tie a very tight knot. Okay. That kind of makes your t-shirt yarn look like a like a bow. Yeah, it kind of looks like a, yeah. a bow. Like so it. go ahead, go ahead and knot that a couple of times. Okay. You can see I got a little got a little too tight on my cardboard, <laughs> but I'm still able to make a bow. Perfect. I went ahead and like looped mine back around through it. Okay. But you don't. Yeah, mine's long enough, so I can do that too. Perfect. Yeah. That means that this toy is going to last for a while. <laughs> I hope so, man. All right. Done. Cool. The next step is going to be taking your scissors and literally cutting this end and this end to release your bow from the cardboard. Is this what um, makes the pom-pom? This is what makes the pom-pom. So I've learned how to make a pom-pom probably 20 times in my life. And I always forget how to do it. So this is just one way to do it. With, um, with yarn, you could do it the same way with the yarn, uh, without, you know, t-shirt yarn, just regular yarn. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend making maybe these a little smaller if you're using yarn. Okay. So now comes the fun part where we give our pom-pom a little bit of a haircut. Okay. And this is going to be up to you and your own pom-pom <laughs> making skills. Okay. So I don't like for my pom-poms to be like super long like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting off the ends a little bit to make it more of a palm. Oh, it's cute. I kind of like mine a little shaggy. That's, and you know, that's your personal preference. That's up to you. All right. Now I'm just going to take all the scraps and move them out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, I guess whenever you're crafting, it's always good to have a little waste basket near you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So that's, that's it. There are your oh. cat toys. I love it. That, that now you can throw on the ground and let the cat start playing with them. I'll try to get a video of that happening and I can share it. Please, <laughs> please do. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. Cool. So that's it for the cat. And now on to the dog. For this dog toy, you will need to cut multiple t-shirts into t-shirt yarn and cut them into strips of yarn three to four feet long. In my example, I have about six pieces of yarn per color. Next, you will want to take all the strips of yarn and make sure they are all in the same starting position. After that, you will gather all of your yarn and tie them together in a knot. This may take a couple of tries depending on how many strands of yarn you have for your toy. Once you have your knot, you will want to pull each strand individually at the top to tighten your knot even more. And once you have pulled all of your top strands, go ahead and pull each bottom strand as well. This should ensure that your main knot is super secure. Next, you will separate each color into groups and tie a loose knot at the end of each color group to make sure all of your colors stay organized. Once this is done, arrange your color groups into a plus sign, and then we are ready to start our diamond knot. To create the diamond knot, you will take the first group that is closest to you 
and place it over the color group to the right. Make sure you leave a loop for the very first move. This is very important. You will then take the second color group and cross it over both the first group and third group. Next, you will take the third group and cross it over the second and also over the fourth. Then last, you will take your fourth group and cross it over the third, then over and through the loop you created with your first group. When you have done all of these steps, you will be able to see an interwoven square. Now carefully, pull and tighten the groups one at a time until they have tightened enough to pull them all together. This will take a little time, but it's worth it. And there you go, the first diamond knot in our tug toy. Now continue this process until you reach the desired length of your dog toy. Once you have finished your knots, you can take the leftover strands and separate them into two groups and tie a knot at the end of your toy. Once again, this might take a couple of tries, but you can do it. You will then take your scissors and cut off the ends to make them all the same length. And there you go, your very own couture dog toy for your precious pooch. Thank you all so much for watching this tutorial and make sure to take a picture of your finished products with your fur babies and tag us on either Instagram or Facebook. Bye!